Hello, who I, are you? What's up you guys? Thank you for joining me on today's video. My name is Whitney Baldwin and I do a lot of different fun and creative things here on this channel. And today we will be talking about bullet journaling. I got my grubby little hands on a brand new one that I picked up at Chelsea Market for $18.95 and I also got some craft and art supplies. I'm so excited. I will be sharing with you what it is that you're gonna need to get started and you are gonna come along with me and we are gonna set up this Lloyd's Charm 1917 together. The reason why I decided to adopt the bullet journal system into my life is because I have so many different notebooks that I use on a daily basis and I just kind of wanna smush them into one and that is what the bullet journal kind of does for you. The bullet journal really is great because you get to create what it is that you want to keep in there. So the actual notebook that has kind of been taking the world by storm is this Lloyd's Charm 19 17 with the little kind of dots on the page. You don't need this. You can use any notebook you have. You can use blank paper, you can use graph paper, you can use lined paper, you can use whatever it is that you have on hand. You don't have to go out and buy a new notebook. I am a notebook whore, so if I can go out and buy a new notebook, I'm gonna go do it. You can honestly use an 89 cent spiral bound notebook you get from the drugstore and that is perfectly fine. The valuable part is the system that is put in place that the guy created. His name's like Ryan something. Another really popular brand that people, I've seen a lot of people using for bullet journaling are the Moleskines. And I love the Moleskine brand. I have a ton of them that I've filled up and used, but I wanted to try something different and we'll see how this Lloyd's Charm compares to the Moleskine. All right, so let me go ahead and tell you what is actually in this Lloyd's Charm 1917 notebook. There are 249 numbered pages. There's a blank table of contents, eight perforated and detachable sheets, expandable pocket page, a marker and elastic enclosure band, thread bound book open flat, sticker for labeling and archiving, dimensions are 145 by 210 centimeters, I don't know what that is in inches, uh, ink proof paper and acid free paper. One more thing I want to say before we get started is that I've seen so many beautiful, amazing bullet journals that look like works of art. And if you're an artist and that's something that you want to do, go ahead. I'll probably have a little bit of that in my journal, but you don't have to. This is supposed to help your life be organized and help you stay on track of your goals and other things that you're trying to track in your life. This is supposed to be an aid to you, not be a burden of trying to make it perfect and not be cumbersome to where you don't want to do it. So keep it as clean, as artsy, as funky, as weird as you want it to be because it is a personal expression of your personality and how you like to stay organized and what you want for your life. I will also leave a link below to my favorite bullet journalists and their Instagram pages. Holy cow, you guys, like talk about aesthetic. Without further ado, let's hop right into this video because I'm about to put my pants, I'm so excited. Here it is, the Lloyd's Term 1917 dotted notebook with the numbered pages. Let's go ahead and open this up and see what we got in here. All right, so as soon as you open it, you have this little thank you card that says, thank you very much for purchasing a Lloyd's Term 1917 product. For 100 years, we have been developing our product in the firm belief that details matter. May we wish you a lot of pleasure with this product. How cute is that? Perfect little detail touch. And this is the Lloyd's Charm 1917 little um, pamphlet. Oh, cute. So this kind of tells you all about the company and the products that they make and all the different uh, lines that they do. So here is a page for your name and address, which I will fill in later. There's a little blank page right here. And then we get right into your index. This is where you put the page number that is affiliated with the topic that you are inserting into your bullet journal. So the first thing is gonna be your key, your future log, your different collections, and then when you get into your months and different things that eventually evolve. So you don't have to flip through every page, you can just reference your own index and go exactly to the page you are intending to look for. So two more pages for your index. And then we get right into the little dotted section of this journal. And then you have hundreds of pages for your journaling. 
all of your creative ideas. And then there's just a little end cover. And then back here is a little pocket. This pocket is pretty big. It'll be enough for you to put some stickers, just a few other um, kind of scrapbooky type things if you'd like. This is, I guess, archival stickers for when you are finished with your book, you can label the binding and put it on a shelf and know exactly what it is for. You get two contrasting little bookmarks as well, so you can put one for something you frequently access and then one for your monthly log wherever you are or the day wherever you're at. These are some of the supplies I'll be using for my bullet journal this year. I got most of them at Blick. I got these Crayola Super Tips from Walmart and I think I got this ruler from my school supply stuff. You are gonna to wanna to invest in a ruler for your bullet journal. It'll help you out a lot when you're trying to make clean straight lines. I got this clear one that you can actually see through to the back of what you're doing and what you're working on. Then I also picked up this one. It has a cork backing, so it was a non-slip type of deal. And then I also have this guy that I'm gonna keep on my desk. It's obviously not gonna fit inside my bullet journal, but um, it will reach the whole length of the page. So this will stay on my desk. These will go into the pocket behind. You're also gonna definitely want a pencil. I like this Paper Mate clear point pencil and the .5 lead. I also have the .3 lead, which is awesome as well. But you're gonna want a pencil to do your preliminary doodling and sketching, and then you can go over that with pen. It'll just make your life easier if you're not really sure what you're gonna do, um, and it will make less mistakes happen. But remember, you can go over pencil with pen, don't go over it with marker if you're intending to erase it because marker kind of locks the pencil lead into the page. But if you go over it with pen, you can erase the pencil lines around the pen. This is the 0.3 millimeter Pentel Arts Hybrid Technica. This is the Stadler Pigment Liner 0.1. Although the 0.1 is smaller than the 0.3, I feel like this Pentel 0.3 writes a little bit more finely than this Stadler, but I really like how they both write. This is the most expensive out of the bunch, actually. It's a Paper Mate Liquid Flare Extra Fine. I do like this. I'll be using this for outlining. Uh, the ink is pretty liquidy. It's pretty intense, so I'm hoping that this doesn't bleed to the other side, but it is a thicker uh, line than the rest of these, and I will swatch all of these for you guys. These are the Stadler Tri Plus Fine Liner Marker Pens. These are the Stabilo 0.88. I pretty much took all of my notes in school with these pens. I just love them. They feel like a pencil. They're long enough, especially when you keep the cap on them. It's very balanced. It's, it, I just, it writes really well and I just love these guys. And then the Crayola Super Tips. I got it like the 12 pack of these. Uh, all the bullet journalists that I've seen lately have been using these and I do like them, but I feel like they may bleed through to the other side, I'm not sure. I also have heard that the Zebra Mild Liners are great for bullet journaling. I don't have those here. I think I'll probably order some off of Amazon, but for now we're just gonna stick with this Crayola. We're gonna use what we have. I'm gonna do a little swatching of these for you guys and then we're gonna go ahead and jump right in and get started.
Well, I messed up here, but I don't have any white out, so I'm just gonna keep going. All right, I started filling out this little setup of my bullet journal. Let's do a little flip through and then I'll tell you some little comments here and there on things that I would have maybe changed along the way. I started filling out my index with my key, my future log, my I have a goals page, a reading list, and my adventures page. So your key is basically the kind of like code for what you're gonna use for your to-do and tasks list and your planning of your life. So this is the key that I chose with. There are so many different types of keys that you can use. I found this one on um, girl.com. I'll have that link below. I liked it the best. I kind of take notes this way anyway. So, you know, the newest things to me are the Merge Forward, which I do like. I used to like put a big X through it and then just rewrite it. The Merge Forward means I'm not going to do it right now. I'm gonna merge it forward to the next month. And a lot of people have rules, like if you merge it forward three times, then you just have to delete it off your list of stuff to do. The marker that I use kind of bled through, so what I'm gonna do is tape these two together, and then voila, you'll never know. Really, the only difference between this page and this page is with the uh, month names, I wrote the month name, boxed it in, and then colored it in with this Crayola Super Tips. And I feel like it got really muddy with the ink on this one. I made the box, filled it in first with this marker, and then wrote the name of the month on top. For the month of March, I made a mistake. I was in the zone and I put 20, I started to put 29 days in February, and then I started the first on a Friday. This should be on a Thursday. So what I'm gonna do is in the very back, I use this as a kind of like a marker page to see if things would bleed through. I'll probably just cut out a little square of this corner and then tape it right on top of this month and then rewrite the month. This is my goals page. I started filling out a few goals that I have here and there. And then this is my reading list page. So <laughs> I initially put this brown craft paper over the middle part of this page because the ink I used on the other side of the page really bled through and I wanted to kind of block it off to make a new area for me to write. And I used this Elmer's glue. I don't have all of my craft supplies up here at the house, so I used what I had and don't use this stuff on your bullet journal, guys. It's a bad idea. 
these pages are a little too thin and they get really warpy. Um, so I just added another piece of white paper on top to kind of minimize the crinkling, I guess. And just some of this. This is um, actually white electrical tape. It's not washi tape. You could use some sort of like a washi tape if you'd like. I just stuck with the white. But this page, I do really love it. This ink is still like coming off. This is the Studio Pigment ink that I got from Michaels. This might not be the best ink to use in your bullet journal if you don't want it to transfer. Um, or you need to set it somehow, I don't know. I don't really use ink that often like this. I do like these stamps. Michaels has a ton of different um, style of alphabet. These were, this was only a dollar and I think this was a dollar. So I might try to play around with a different type of ink so I don't get so much transfer. Maybe I just need to let it dry way longer. But this spread is basically keeping track of my yearly adventures. I travel a lot. I love to travel and explore and be out in the world because life is too short to really just stay in one place. I just, I love to travel. So basically this is a quote I found by Aaron Van Buren that says, be brave, be wild, and stay forever hungry for art, love, knowledge, and adventure. Not really sure if you can read that. Don't know if it's legible, but I like it. And over here I have the months of the year for 2017, and I'm just kind of logging where I went with who and where I stayed. And that is it, you guys. So you can see on this page how the ink kind of bled through to the other side. All right, so that is it for my setup of my bullet journal. I hope you liked it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I could inspire you guys for a few different creative things. But just a quick little flip through again. These will be taped together. That is it for this video, you guys. Thank you so much for joining me and helping me set up my very first bullet journal. I'm so excited about it. I hope I really stick to it and I plan my little heart away. Please don't get hard on yourself if you make a mistake or if you mess up, just keep going and start to love the imperfections in your art and in what you're doing because they're a part of you and they're really beautiful and super cute when you look back on them later on. If you do get started, please tag me in Instagram or Twitter or something. I just, of their videos, I'm like, yeah, post a picture in the comments below. You can't do that, and I didn't realize that. So, new to YouTube, and I'm learning. So, thank you guys so much. Give this video a play. Thank you so much, and give this video a big thumbs up. And subscribe if you haven't already. And check out my other videos. I'm renovating a house right now, this house that I'm in. I'm putting my heart and soul into renovating this house. So if you would like to see how this house is coming along, check out my other videos. All right, thank you so much. And I will see you guys soon. What Bert talked to you about is what Bert, damn. So today what I'm gonna to talk to you about is what burn burn it? Why do I keep saying that? Get it together.